Hey investor friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Michelle Markey and if you were worried like I was about the potential end of the backdoor and mega backdoor Roth IRA conversion, never fear because the current rules are staying in place going into 2022. So that's great news whether you're an everyday person like I am or if you're a wealthy person and looking to maximize your retirement investing and I'll catch us up on the latest of what I learned and what's changed or not changed since I first did a video on this topic weighing the potential impact of the potential end of this tax loophole and if you also enjoy learning about topics like this so you can maximize your retirement investing I'd love if you could please like and subscribe to my video and YouTube channel because I'm trying my hardest to help us be as prepared as we can be for our future retirement so thanks and just to make sure we're on the same page with terminologies a backdoor Roth IRA is where people first contribute to a traditional IRA and then convert the funds in there into a Roth IRA and they just may have to pay some taxes on any amounts that weren't taxed before and this is popular because people get to then enjoy tax-free earnings on their contributions in the then converted Roth IRA for the rest of time as well as there are no income limits to contributing to a traditional IRA so it's almost like you just got to have a Roth IRA in the first place because it's pretty effortless to be able to convert or roll a traditional IRA into a Roth IRA with the current rules so it's almost like what's the point of having the restrictions with the Roth IRA and then when it comes to a mega backdoor Roth IRA this is where people first contribute to a 401k like their workplace retirement plan which is a defined contribution plan and then they can convert that into a Roth IRA and that's a mega backdoor Roth IRA and that's also really popular because some of the income limits are pretty flexible with a 401k so people let's say making over four hundred thousand dollars a year can still contribute to a 401k and then they can convert that into a Roth IRA and continue enjoying some tax-free earnings to some extent I mean there was also some limits because the maximum amount that you can contribute to a mega backdoor Roth IRA does get tapped out as far as how much tax-free earnings you can have on some of those contributions but for the most part this is also a very popular strategy especially among high income earners and so what came to be concerning about the proposed tax changes with retirement plans in the 1.75 trillion dollar build back better act that was approved in the house in mid-november 2021 was that it would have started putting an end to some of the backdoor and mega backdoor roth strategies starting as early as 2022 and some provisions would start 10 years from now but this was especially alarming to me because one of the proposed provisions from the house committee on ways and means had said that this section prohibits all employee after-tax contributions in qualified plans and prohibits after-tax IRA contributions from being converted to Roth regardless of income level effective for distributions transfers and contributions made after December 31 2021 so to me I was bugging out a little bit because I was interpreting this as though it applied to the elective Roth contributions to the 401k and then I thought that this was going to ruin the ability to convert the normal elective Roth 401k contributions into a Roth IRA but it turns out from doing further research that what this provision was actually referring to was something that's considered after tax that's separate from Roth so I know that this is kind of confusing because I used to think that Roth was just equal to after tax contributions but it turns out there are three kinds of contributions you can make to 401ks and they include pre-tax and Roth and also something called after tax contributions to a 401k that I'll get into shortly so normally what we can do with a 401k is we can contribute elective deferrals or contributions that are either in the pre-tax or Roth form or a combination of both up to the annual limits and that's usually for 2022 twenty thousand five hundred dollars if you're under 50 or twenty seven thousand dollars if you're over 50 and then your employer could choose to match or not match any of that amount you contributed and it could be up to a total of forty thousand five hundred dollars for a grand total of sixty one thousand dollars if you're under 50 or sixty seven thousand five hundred dollars if you're over 50 but usually most of us can't contribute that full total sixty 
60 something thousand dollar amount to our 401ks because we're capped out with our elective deferrals at the 20 something thousand dollar amounts that we can contribute, right? So what there actually came to be is this additional type of contributions that very few plans actually allow for, like only 20% of 401ks apparently allow for employees to contribute additional after-tax contributions to the 401k, which are not the Roth 401k contributions, as I'll explain in a moment. And so let's say you're not necessarily a high income earner, but you wanted to maximize your retirement investing contributions and be able to contribute beyond the 2022 annual limit of $20,500 if you're under 50 and be able to reach the total of $61,000 socked away in a 401k so you could eventually realize your dreams of converting all those contributions into a Roth IRA and then continue enjoying tax-free earnings in the amounts in the Roth IRA for the rest of time and so what this would mean is like I learned in some Fidelity articles that I found especially helpful is that after you contributed to the annual limit in your 401k you may be able to save even more on an after-tax basis and earnings on after-tax contributions are considered pre-tax and would grow tax deferred until withdrawals begin and converting after-tax 401k contributions to a Roth account is an option and after converting to a Roth, earnings can grow and be distributed tax-free if certain requirements are met. And if we go further down in this article page, in the what you save section, we can see that what we're able to contribute in a 401k is indeed either elective deferrals, either in the form of the tax deferred or pre-tax contributions or Roth or a combination of both and or the third option of after-tax contributions to your workplace savings plan if allowed by your employer. And that's a big caveat. And then if we look at this other article about rolling after-tax money in a 401k to a Roth IRA, we can see again the three types of contributions that we're able to do of pre-tax, Roth, and also the additional after-tax. And so if we look at the last sentence in the after-tax section, we can see that in retirement, withdrawals of after-tax contributions would be tax-free, but any earnings on the after-tax contributions would be taxed as ordinary income. So that's helpful to keep in mind because even if you wanted to and you were able to or allowed to by your plan to contribute the $40,500, assuming none of it was matched from your employer, you would only be able to withdraw that amount in retirement without being taxed on it, but you would be taxed on any of the earnings on that $40,500 that you did in the year 2022. So I think this is very helpful to keep in mind and definitely helps clarify a lot of things for me because I was worried again, like I said, with those proposed tax changes, that it would have perhaps affected the elective deferrals, but it turns out it definitely doesn't. It would have only affected the potential additional after-tax amounts, as we can see in reading these Fidelity articles. And because it's always a good idea to verify information using multiple sources, I'm glad I came across another article that affirmed what Fidelity was saying in answering the question, are after-tax contributions the same as Roth contributions? And they wrote, no, absolutely not. Although Roth contributions are made on an after-tax basis, when people talk about after-tax money in an employer plan, they're usually talking about funds contributed to the traditional side of the plan, but for which no tax break was received. The biggest difference between the two is the tax treatment when distributions are taken in the future. While both Roth 401k salary deferrals and their earnings can be distributed tax-free, if part of a qualifying distribution, the gains earned on any after-tax contributions to the plan are generally taxable when distributed. So there we have it. Definitely confirmation that what we learned from Fidelity's articles was definitely right when it comes to there being three kinds of contributions that could be made to a 401k plan. And so for anyone who is rooting to keep the current rules for the backdoor and mega backdoor Roth IRAs, you're in luck because you get a reprieve since the Build Back Better Act was stalled in the Senate leading up to the holidays in 2021. So it's not likely that it was gonna pass in 2021 at that point in time. So more likely the bill might come up for a vote in the Senate in 2022. And then if it's passed in the Senate, then it might go to the president's desk to be signed. And then it goes into law. And 
so likely the effective dates for some of the restrictions, whether it's for people of all income levels or just some high income earners, might not take effect until 2023 because it's unlikely that they would make the proposed tax changes retroactive to start at January 1, 2022, let's say, because that just seems kind of complicated and not very feasible. So people might get a reprieve for as long as maybe up to a year if some of the proposed tax changes only go into law starting in 2023 and beyond. And so you may be wondering if there's anything to worry about for those of us who are not among the top 1.8% making $400,000 a year or more. And it looks like the coast is clear for now as perhaps some of the potential restrictions that there might be in the future may only actually apply to a very small amount of the population, especially if you're not really interested in contributing the after-tax contributions to a 401k in order to eventually roll them over into a Roth IRA. And even though I wasn't able to get my 401k provider to assuage me of whether I can still convert my Roth 401k into a Roth IRA. It looks like things are staying as is for now. So I'm pretty sure that if I ever wanted to in the future, most likely I can still roll over my Roth 401k into my Roth IRA and everything will be just fine and dandy. So if you enjoyed this video or learned something, please like and subscribe. And I wish you well in your journey to investing for retirement and enjoying life to the fullest. Till next time.